What's good? What's happening? We got Sony V280% But Pit My Ride was fake Here's the evidence Alright Yo, I used to watch this show heavy, bro I just found it so cool what they did to these cars Of course As years go by You get older, you notice Or realize that all that is fake Alright And I guess they were reusing Used parts or stuff that These people would get their car And it would just break out uh, Break down or whatever, the f you know what I'm saying? Like, they went the extra mile to do all this crazy shit with their cars, bro. Um, but yeah, I used to watch this heavy, bro. You're at a house. It's not my house. It's a staged house. And the contestants' houses weren't the only thing Pimp My Ride lied about. The reactions were staged and retaken multiple times. Certain upgrades were taken off as soon as the cameras cut. It's for a boat. He goes, it's a GPS for waterways. It will not work in your car. And disappointingly, even Exhibit himself had no real interest in cars. Soccer moms coming up to me, telling me about their husband and their car that he had since the 60s. And I was like, stop talking. <laughs> me about this i know as much as you do when asked if the show bro i wonder how much money he made off that damn show bro i'm not gonna lie it was fake a former contestant replied with a single word correct which isn't surprising as the show even lied about who the contestants were for example in season 2 episode 10 brooke was introduced as a 22 year old film lover working hard to go to grad school which had been fabricated by the producers as she was actually a 25 year old cocktail waitress planning to move back to new york the reason for this as explained by jake from season 3 was because pin my ride only picked people in their early 20s there was a strict age limit of 22 years old Confirming that the show was lying about contestants' details before filming had even Bro. started. In the first 30 seconds of each episode, Exhibit emphasizes that each contestant doesn't know they're about to get picked. He has no idea. I'm about to pimp his ride. Yet this was strange as the contestant always answered the door, always had a microphone on them, and even had their windows blacked out as if they didn't want cameras seeing inside. Well, it turns out Brooke, the supposed 22-year-old film lover, had been pre-selected by a friend to appear on the show, and as a result, she'd stayed when Exhibit showed up at my house to tell me I'd been chosen, not a surprise. What was a surprise was when the producers made me react and react and then react again to Exhibit showing up, finally coercing me into doing a car wheel, and she wasn't the only contestant who'd had this experience. And they push you on how to say it and what to say. <sighs> yeah, I know a lot of on TV shows and movies is fake. It, like, fake, but like, that is so cringe, bro. It's so cringe. I feel like you can be an actor, bro, but like, you don't gotta fake shit, You know what I'm saying? You can create a show and videos and all that. You just like, it's not hard to be genuine about it. You know what I'm saying? Shit doesn't have to be staged or faked or whatever have you, bro. It's just, I don't know. I find that shit so cringy, bro. I'm not gonna lie. And everything like that. The show didn't have an actual script, but they did steer the dialogue in a direction that they wanted. If I said something they liked, they would have me repeat it over and over on camera. This had been commented by Seth, who appeared in season five, who was also well aware that Exhibit was coming to his house, stating, They told me I was in the running for my own episode, but it was between me and two other people. When I was sitting in the house waiting for a knock at the door, they said that it was either going to be Exhibit or a producer telling me I didn't win. Thinking back on it, that was all bullshit, but it did make the Surprise Genuine, which was the same experience as Erin from Season 4, Episode 2. She was one of three contestants. One of them would be chosen. Someone came and knocked at the door. If it was Exhibit, they won. Each contestant was at least somewhat aware. Okay, so I mean, in that aspect, yeah, the reactions were genuine because, again, they were left with, like, pretty much if he shows up, he, they won. But then how he said they had to replay the reactions, bro, fuck that that they'd be getting a knock on the door because, well, the homes they were in were actually owned by Pimp My Ride. A Huffington Post article clarified, these houses were oftentimes not the contestants' homes. Instead, each dwelling had been rented by MTV. For example, when Jake from season three was asked, did the film crew show up and stage the whole surprise as part of the episode? He'd respond by stating, it wasn't my house. It was a place owned by one of the crew members. Similarly, Seth from season five stated, the house was rented from Craigslist because I lived in an apartment and they need a house 
with a big open driveway for filming, which is certainly reasonable, although sometimes the house was part of the person's story. In season two, for example, yeah. Eric's car had yeah. supposedly been beat up in the rough streets of Compton. In Compton, ain't no street lights in Compton. <laughs> However, judging from a quick look at Google Maps, it seems the episode was filmed in a much nicer neighborhood. So if Eric's story was inconsistent and Brooke's story from earlier was downright fabricated, then who else's stories were exaggerated for the sake of the show? Well, it seems pretty much all of them. In season three, Jake's Yo. Buick had been bought from his grandma who smoked, and as a result, the show threw an extra few dozen cigarette butts in the car to make her just look like a totally <laughs> disgusting person. Yo, I just... Oh, this is so cringe, bro. I can't. I just can't. I, I wonder if these people got paid. I did hear, though, that... Uh, that somebody... Let me see. What did I... I read up on about the cars before he got pimped. You know what I'm saying? That it was actually their cars, but they had ruined it. And I guess they never got compensated for it or some shit. I, I don't know. I read something like that. On top of this, the show interviewed Jake's girlfriend toward the start of the episode, yet MTV apparently questioned me having a girlfriend and suggested I dump her because it was better for my desperate dude with a shit car image. A producer later responded, Suggested leaving his girl to put up an image for the show. Just don't include the girl in the show. The fuck are these producers thinking, bro? What? That is the dumbest shit I've ever read. They suggested him leave his girl so he can have this, like, portray this image. Just don't put the girl in the show. The fuck? Am I reading that right? Am I understanding that right? I dump her because it was better for my desperate dude with a shit car image. A producer later responded by stating, why would we want a kid to break up with his girlfriend? Right. How would that have helped the show? So while Jake's claim about his right. girlfriend was somewhat questionable, the, the cigarette story was confirmed by Seth who had a similar experience. I know I'm fat, but they went the extra mile to make me look extra fat by telling the world that I kept candy all over my seat and floor just in case I got hungry. Yo, this ain't, listen. I'm pretty sure I've heard M like MTV shows where they do that. They go the extra mile, bro. They do all this extra shit. And it's like... However, it seems the fakest story was Justin's in season six. His front bumper he said what? got hungry. However, it seems the fakest story was Justin's in season six. His front bumper had supposedly fallen off in a car crash. Here is a result of a three car pile up right here. Although according to a 2010 tweet, my friend Justin was on Pimp My Ride. On TV, he said his RAV4 was involved in a three car crash. No, it wasn't. Dude beat his car up with a bat. The same user then clarified what he told me was that MTV suggested to him that he and his friend should do more damage to the car, which was confirmed by Justin himself who'd add, yes, they removed my front bumper, used aircraft remover and enhanced the dent on the side of my car. Whilst introducing the episode, I think this is going to go back to my statement I just made of what I, not a statement, but what I heard, what I just said. That these cars were actually theirs and the producers wanted them to do more shit to it. And then they never got compensated for it or got an actual car that, I don't know. Justin stated, One of my crazy ex-girlfriends actually threw nail polish on my hood. Although when he was asked, why are all your ex-girlfriends so angry? Justin revealed it was just something I made up. While Erin from season four was also encouraged to make her car look bad. They asked to leave trash in the car. We went to in and out and so they told me to leave it in the cup holder, so I did. It seems the only real part of the show's intro was Exhibit's improvised dialogue. Because it wasn't scripted. Mm -hmm. I could say whatever I want to say. And when Exhibit drove the car to the shop. <laughs> Exhibit did actually actually take the car. Wait. Oh, that boy cut his hair down. I could say whatever I want to say. And when Exhibit drove the car to the shop. Exhibit did actually take the cars and drive them away with the exception of a few that were too broken down and then they made it look like he did. Although this segment created even more problems. Most people believe that Pamar takes the car and gives it back in like a week or something. That's what I thought was going to happen so too. But in actuality, they took my car yep. for roughly seven months. I read being that a shit massive before. inconvenience for some of the show's contestants. And they make it look like they're moving really really fast but in reality they weren't when asked for the five months they had your car did they supply you with a replacement car justin from season six replied no they gave me two thousand dollars to rent a car but i was 19 at the time i rented a car for a month and it cost me a thousand dollars two thousands two thousand dollars 
for five months is not enough. Rented the car for a month. So he was left with an extra band. So you, do you guys like understand how wealthy MTV is? The company, the corporation. You know how much money they have, bro? They could have at least covered the rental for them, bro. That is crazy, bro. I mean, I guess he left with a band, but like still. Is forcing Justin to find his own transport for the remaining four months. Seth from season five had a similar experience, Bro. being forced to go to a really small shady company off the freeway by LAX because they were the only ones willing to rent to me because of my age. It sucked Bro. having that rental car because they wouldn't take payments over the phone, so once a month I had to drive all the way from West Covina to LAX just for them to swipe my card. Although the rental situation was better for other Bro. contestants. They had my car for about six months, and that time I had the rental car car for six months as well with jake from season three adding they gave me a really nice mitsubishi lancer to drive for the time they had the buick in the meantime the crew began to plan how the rides were going to be pimped although according to a former production staffer this was also somewhat staged the boardroom scenes with the wcc crew took a long time to shoot they often had to be fed line by line some of those guys never really got used to being on tv some of the lines in the shop probably seem rehearsed because producers would come up with them and feed them to the wcc guys although it's Excluding this, the mechanics were fairly innocent. The segment where they'd pimp the car was almost impossible to fake. They really did put shit in the vehicles and change everything out. But when contestants were shown what their new car looked like, Pimp My Ride employed even more staging. Finally came the day for the big reveal. They filmed my reaction to the car at least 10 times. Yo, I go live, bro. Me, what? Like, again, I used to watch the show heavy, bro. Like, damn near every episode. I would only care about what the end product, bro. Like, how does the car look? What's inside the car? That's what interested me the, mo the most. You know what I'm saying? And again, I was young, bro. I was like... How, bro, how old was I? I can't... Yo. I think I was... Younger than... Younger than 12? I think I was watching this shit at 7 or 12 years old, bro. And I was just sitting there like, wow, that's cool. I like that. They put a PlayStation in the car. I want that for my car in the future. Literally getting all these ideas and inspirations from the fucking show up. Like when I, I'm able to get a car, I'm going to do all this shit. Nowadays, it's like, bro, if you riding around in a paint my right ass car, you're getting flamed, bro. You're getting judged. Everybody going to make fun of you. That shit's not cool. It's not cool, bro. We're not in the 2000s anymore. You know what I'm saying? When the spinners was a thing. I ain't going to lie, bro. I put some spinners on my bitch. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? Bring that bitch back. Before Low key. I'd even seen it. And when I did, holy hell. Poor <clears throat> Betsy looked like Barbie's dream car from hell. It was pimped to the nines and hideous. This had been written by Brooke, who gave a much different reaction during her episode. Beautiful. Perfect color. Exactly, exactly the color I want. While every other contestant also filmed their reveal multiple different times. We had to take a lot of takes over and over and over and over and over and over again. Justin stated they had to keep retaking my reaction. Reaction. Seth stated I even had to do the reveal of the car like three times. However, Jake's reaction anecdote was the strangest of them all. His first real reaction to the car was just quiet amazement where he said this is good. They immediately yelled redo and then things got a bit weirder. I remember this very clearly. Big Dane, very big dude. He like puts his arm around my shoulder, kind of walks me around the shop for like 10 minutes and he's like, listen, we put a lot of work into this. We expect you to be a little more enthusiastic, although it would have been hard to conjure enthusiasm for a car that barely worked as Jake would later write the problem with the show is they don't fix any of the mechanical issues and my nope. car was a piece of shit what they it's all aesthetics bro that's what I'm that's what I'm saying like bro everything I saw was just like wow I wasn't thinking about does it drive I, I didn't care about if it drove I like how it looks yeah, you know what I'm saying? Did was make my piece of shit sound exceptionally awesome, which is great, just not great enough to drive on roads. The HuffPost article expanded on this by stating, the car needed a muffler, and so a fake exhaust pipe was installed to make it seem as if that's what the car was supposed to sound like, even though it was just a lack of a muffler, while Exhibit brought up a much more dangerous incident. There was an instance where one of the cars wasn't fixed correctly, and long story short, this kid was driving this vehicle that was supposed to be like damn near brand new, and the steering wheel came came off when he was driving it. It's therefore no surprise that the production nah. staffer said, I can say that the cars often weren't fully ready when we shot the reveal. Some had to stay in the shop another- And you know what's crazy about that? 
since I'm assuming these people, these contestants, had to sign a waiver of some sort, right? God forbid, but if anything would have happened to them, that shit don't affect MTV. That don't hurt their pockets. Another Damn, week or bro. so to get finished before the kids got them back, especially if they had mechanical issues. That's and crazy. it was Seth and his candy bars who seemed to fit this category. Pimari doubled down on his supposedly crappy diet by installing a cotton candy machine in the boot of the car, which didn't even work as the cotton candy machine didn't have a protective hood that fit. So if I tried turning it on, it would get candy strands everywhere. Very messy, so I never used it again after the shoot. That's yo, that is actually some. <laughs> That is some whole ass shit, bro. They know and see that he's overweight. They portray him to be over more overweight than what he is by leaving the candy in the car. But they build a fucking cotton candy machine in the trunk, bro. Yo, that is see and like again. I'm young. I, I'm not. I'm not picking up these different images and things going on. I don't care. I'm looking at the car, I'm pretty sure at that moment I was like, "Wow, that's cool, a cotton candy machine, that's fire." I wasn't thinking, "Damn, bro, they just fucking making him look more bigger." That's cr bro, that's fucked, man. Turning it on, it would get candy strands everywhere. Very fucked. messy, so I never used it again after the shoot. Seth also never used the LED lights installed in the seats as they would get really hot if left <laughs> on, while he also had to remove the gull wing doors because the pistons used to lift them kept them from putting seatbelts in the back, which was highly dangerous. To add a cherry on top of the cake, he had to fork out a further $1,700 for a brand new engine, then adding, after that I drove it for a month before someone hit me and totaled it. However, the end to Whoa. The fact that he had to put money into it is crazy. Uh, her shares bought me a truck. I held on to it as long as I could, but eventually I didn't have anywhere to store, so I parked it in front of my friend's house and it got towed. I got all the good stuff out first. Damn, bro. Ah, at least he got a new car. After that, I drove it for a month before someone hit me and totaled it. However, the end to Justin's RAV4 was even more brutal. After five years of taking his pimped out ride to car shows, Justin's RAV4 caught on fire whilst driving as a result of faulty wires. It was later confirmed that this had nothing to do with the show, and at least Justin's car was the same one he first sent in, as when Tavarish uploaded a video titled, I bought an abandoned pimp my ride minivan, he'd make a shocking discovery. I think I saw this. The show originally introduced- Oh my god, I think I saw this the minivan as a 1998 Plymouth Grand Voyager. However, Tavarish discovered the car was- Yes, bro, I remember watching this. Bro, I fucking- Yo, I seen this in person. Bro, this is- They got Rhode Island plates. I remember seeing this shit in person, bro. Just the minivan as a 1998 Plymouth Grand Voyager. However- Oh my god, bro. I've seen this video and I've seen this bitch in person, dog. What the fuck? Ta what, what's his channel, bro? Tavarish? I gotta look that shit up, bro. I remember watching this bitch. I'm pretty sure he did another car, too. Right? Yo, that's absurd. That's actually absurd. But Tavarish discovered the car was now a 1999 Dodge Caravan, showing that after they wrecked the original minivan, the show sneakily pimped a completely different car. As a result, Exhibit has been the brunt of most of the show's backlash. I was the face of the show, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so people associate me with what happened to the car. Which yeah. feels pretty unfair given every contestant has said he's an awesome guy. In fact, Exhibit only did pimp my ride for the following reason. I actually did pimp my ride because I thought they was gonna play my music videos however it instead seemed to have the so they finessed him he did it because they thought they wanted to play his music but they didn't or did they opposite effect the show was taking away my credibility of wow. what i've already done it was taking so much time i wasn't able to tour i wasn't able to record albums oh damn i definitely I, didn't know i was that. you know i was there filming 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 which is even more depressing given he was barely paid for it but at that particular time you wasn't really happy with the pay though nah <laughs> and as a result, it's no surprise that Pimp My Ride is unlikely to make a comeback. When are we going to get a Pimp no, My Ride? No, no. <laughs> no, never. We fucking don't question you talking about, woman. Yo, nah. See, look, if they bring this back, that'd be interesting. I'm not going to lie. It'd be interesting to see 
how they would go about it. You know what I'm saying? But they got to do it right. They got to do it right. MTV <clears throat> is worth billions, I'd assume. They got to do it right. All right. Yeah. Just don't bring this back. <laughs> don't, don't bring this back. If they're going to bring it back, make it how people uh, customize their car and mod their cars now. Simple. Put some bags on that bitch. Speaker system. Or a little rap. You know, basic shit like that, bro. Calm shit like that. I don't fucking car and candy machine in the trunk. The fuck? That's actually insane, bro. He said, no, no, that's not coming back. A friend of mine has a <clears throat> show on cable TV and he said it's incredible to him. The amount of crap they didn't, they don't have to actually fake, but refilm literally 50 times for a 15 second segment. By the fifth time, what they were doing was has lost all meaning and they should just want it to get over 100%. I don't understand how it compared to all people. I know a YouTube where it's just four guys running around with GoPros having a good time with way more people watching people watching. What? The situation is kind of embarrassing. Now I feel richer than them, even though I am. <laughs> to be honest, I can totally get over the making the car more damaged or the renting a fake, much more filmable house meeting exhibit with fake reactions thing. It's a TV show after all, 100%. But if making people themselves look much worse and disgusting while being total assholes towards them is a huge problem nonetheless. That's how it be, bro. These these fucking production companies and shit, bro. They make pe these all these actors, actresses, people in it. Make them, make them and treat them like shit, bro. No cap. That's no cap. This is actually absurd, bro. I actually remember watching this video, bro. Damn. And I've seen this fucking car in person, dude. That's crazy, bro. That is actually absurd. Listen, bro, if you've watched this show, let me know something you've seen in the show where you were like, wow, that's fire. Because, of course, it's all cool shit, you know, but I don't know. For me, it, again, it was it was that place. I'm pretty sure it was a PlayStation 2. They put into the, the back of a van, SUV, I think. No, it was a car. I think it was a car. And I was like, that's fire, bro. I ain't going to lie. Let me know what y'all thought. That's my reaction from the joke of this video. Like, subscribe if you haven't. I'm out.